Um, I'm Nathaniel Latham. I'm 30, 5'11", 225. I've, you like past shows? Yeah. Um, my last show was Central States. I have competed at the Arnold. I have competed at Nationals twice in Chicago. Um, lots of regular local shows, Grand Rapids, um, Lansing, Flint, etc. Always done men's physique. Was going to start doing classic this year, but I'm taking a year off, at least due to a shoulder injury. Working out with Devin today, we did chest and tr delts. Um, started off with flat bench. I really like flat bench uh, just because it allows you to get a really good stretch. Um, I really like stretching when I train. I think a lot of people overlook stretching. Um, I do a lot of pause reps also and really try to focus on the negative. A lot of people I think overlook. There's three different ways you train the muscle. There's the positive, the negative, and then there's just holding it, the weight stagnant. Um, and I feel like a lot of people overlook that pause rep and the negative and only train the positive. Um, so, anyway, a lot of times I will start with decline, but anyway, I'll, so, yeah, after that we went to, what we do after, hammers, hammers, um, again, just another really good stretch, I feel like hammers are overlooked a lot, hammer presses allow you to bring the, the elbow in closer to the body, taking the stress off the shoulder joint, um, trains the whole chest really well, um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, incline, we went to incline after that. We did that with a barbell. Uh, honestly, a lot of times I do like to use Smith Machine though, just because it allows you to focus more on the muscle instead of like the stabilization and everything. I really like doing ISO movements, but it's good to mix it up. So we did barbell today. And then went to decline after that on the hammer press. Kept the reps high. I'm all about high volume. I will go heavy occasionally, but I think high volume is the way. Forcing as much blood, huh? I think it's, I think it's important for peak week also, if, if anything more important, because uh, we, you know when you train lower reps and higher weight, you're burning more glucose as a fuel source. And when you're this far into prep, you're low, you're depleting and the glucose is more or less gone and the cortisol levels are going to be high which is why we take intra-workout shake uh, which is part of the nutrition for a prep um, I'm all about intra-workout shakes I feel like a lot of people overlook intra-workout the carbs, the high GI carb source in the middle of your workout causing an insulin spike forces out cortisol and allows us to force feed the muscle while we're actually breaking it down now I really like the high volume though especially like I said because um, we're burning more fat as a fuel source, um, we're still burning glucose too, but more, more so fat, and uh, we're not taking as much chance of hurting ourselves with those heavy weights. Cables are great, you know, nothing bad about cables, you can hit every angle. Lower chest, I was training more for lower chest, I know you were doing more for middle, you're bending over a little bit more. Um, but yeah, you can hit every angle, upper, lower, we didn't do any upper, but it's, it's great, get a good pump. Went to delts, start off with laterals, lateral delt raises with dumbbells. I really like to start with laterals because coming into it, they're fresh. You can hit them really hard. I feel like you can't have too big of lateral delts. Um, it just makes just the shape of the body just cut in really well to the bicep. Uh, I think that that's the key, especially because you get a lot of your front delt when you're doing incline bench. So it's kind of a wasted movement to hit. And we did hit some incline, I mean, some front delt. But, um, yeah, rear delts, and that was it. Yeah, usually I would do shrugs. I would do shrugs after rear delt. I feel like when you're doing delts, laterals, and rears, it helps warm up the trap a lot. So normally I would do that, but Devin hit those on back day, and this is Devin's prep, so. All right, so I took Devin over about, I'm not telling all the secrets. You can contact me for that. But um, I took Devin over around six weeks out. Uh, we changed up his meals. Um, I'm huge into carb timing. Um, so, like I was talking earlier about the intro workout shake, whenever our bodies have insulin active, we can't have cortisol. You can only have insulin or cortisol at one time. You can't have both in the body. It's not possible. 
So whenever the body's at high stress, I want carbs in the body. So breakfast, you first think about when you first turn on a light switch. When you first turn on a light switch or you first start your car, it takes more energy to start it than it does to keep it running. So when you first wake up in the morning, you haven't eaten all night, the glucose is depleted, and it takes a lot of energy to wake up the body. So the body's gonna release cortisol to tear down carbon-like structures to create energy. And we don't want that, especially being so depleted. So we eat carbs, you get an insulin spike, cortisol gets pushed out, and now we're back in the anabolic state. And insulin is a transportation hormone. I guess just going to that a little bit. Um, so what insulin does, insulin actually allows our muscles to absorb the glucose and the, the protein, everything that we're putting into our bodies. Uh, so I like it for breakfast and I like it anywhere around workout times. So pre-workout to help load the glucose for a workout, intra workout to push out that cortisol and also help load us with glucose. And the post-workout, I like low GI carb to bring you down, it's kind of like a parachute, bringing you down from that high glucose carb in your workout, helps stay off hunger and help refuel the muscle. And then I kind of keep carbs really low after that. Um, try and keep blood sugar low. With blood sugar lower, we're gonna burn more fat. And since we're not training, we're not doing anything real high stress, cortisol will be kept to a minimum, preferably, hopefully. And uh, we keep the protein high, we keep the fat up, help our bodies to burn more fat. And uh, I don't like carbs anywhere around bedtime because if your body has insulin active, it cannot make growth hormone. Your pituitary cannot produce growth hormone while insulin is active in the body. So I don't like to eat carbs for hours before bed uh, just to have that blood sugar real low so when we go to sleep, you get the biggest growth hormone spurt during REM sleep, uh, which I don't want to miss out on. So that was, that was a lot of changes we made. And then also, he was doing a lot of cardio. I told him to stop doing all cardio. Cardio is the devil. You shouldn't do it until you have to. Diet, diet should do the work. If you're, di if you're not work, if if you're fucking seven, I swear, I like, if you're seven weeks out, and you're not losing weight on your diet, it's, you should not be doing cardio. Your diet's wrong. Cardio is not necessary. I only did two weeks of cardio for my last show. Uh, I, I mean, if your diet's not, you know, yeah, exactly. If your diet's not working, it's it's your diet. It's not. You shouldn't be doing more work. In fact, a lot of times, if your diet's not working and you're doing cardio. Well, the reason why your diet's not working is because your body's in starvation mode, probably, because you're not feeding it enough. And then you're doing cardio on top of that. So the cardio is gonna put you in more of a catabolic state. So you're gonna go more into starvation mode. So what your body's gonna do is, it's gonna hold on to everything it can because it thinks it's gonna die, more or less. And it's not gonna be burning the stuff. So you're gonna look softer. You might be losing weight, but it's muscle mass you're losing, not fat. And eventually you'll plateau and it'll stop working. So you have to feed the body in order to keep the fire. To, to burn a fire, you gotta feed it. You stop feeding the fire, it's gonna go out. It's, it's basic logic. Yeah, so we, we upped his carbs. We stopped all cardio and he lost four pounds the first week. Pumps came back to normal. And uh, I think I think he looks great. I don't see anything. Toast for breakfast. Yeah, stop him. To, I mean, you know, it's the thing, a lot of people will stop me and ask me what I eat. Like, I eat a lot of French toast. And when you look at it, like for my carb meals, if you use like Ezekiel bread, it's a really low GI, a uh, whole grain carb source. And if you're using egg whites, it's, a, it's egg whites are the best protein source there is. Bioavailability, people don't look at bioavailability, but like beef for instance, and I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but it's like 78% bioavailability. So if you eat a pound of beef, you're only absorbing like three quarters of it and the other quarter is getting shit out. Whereas if you're eating like, whey, whey, whey protein is 100, whey protein is 100, but egg whites, egg whites are 105. They go above the scale. So, yeah, like I said, carbs, protein. And people are like, oh, you eat French toast? How do you do that on prep? Well, when you look at it from science point of view, like, I, I see all these people eating fish all the time. Like, what is, what is fish going to do for you? Is there a chemical in fish that makes you lose more weight that I don't know about? Because, like, there's no chemical that makes your, your skin, like, tighter or thinner. All you're doing is getting a bunch of mercury. It's dumb. So... And what's the bioavailability of these fishes? Like maybe 80%, probably more like 60s in the high 60s. So anyway, good food, eating at the right time with the right workout plan, that's all it takes. All right, what's up guys? Um, Devin Blackmore, um, making another video here with Jeff. Once again, we did uh, chest and shoulders, just happened to fall on the same day. Um, <laughs> 
didn't didn't plan that out. Just worked out for everybody's schedule. Um, here with my new coach Nate, uh, Team Classic Classic Fitness, Lansing, Michigan. Check it out. It's gonna be the best gym around. Um, so been working with Nate for about five, almost five, not quite five weeks now, I think. Um, and just within the first few days, uh, body went through some major changes. Um, started feeling a lot better in the gym. Um, started to just respond better to the diet, um, <clears throat> breaking up fats and carbs and, and, uh, and not mixing those and, and having, definitely like he was talking about, having a carb source first thing in the morning, especially after we started adding in cardio again, uh, just really helped relieve some of that stress that my body was feeling, just relieve some of that starvation type uh, feeling and really got, got things going, fed the fire. Um, workouts have been amazing. I mean, I've, I have never done a prep before where I've been able to get a pump during peak week, let alone the last few weeks. Um, and even PRing, uh, two weeks out, PR on squat, uh, 500 pounds for six reps. And there were some deep, there were some good deep reps. So um, that's just a testament to how well the diet's been working. Um, just been being consistent, nothing crazy. Um, just doing the doing the work. Uh, not a minute more, not a minute less of cardio. I, I added in a little bit more because I went over on my on my refeed, but. Uh, just, just being consistent, just kind of putting things on cruise control the last few weeks, and just been uh, dropping. I think the last week I've dropped about a pound a day, almost, or a pound every other day. Um, so I think the last time we shot about five weeks ago I was 214, and this morning I was 2.6 pounds. So we might actually make light heavies, which would be pretty awesome. I think we'll make it. So. Um, didn't did not foresee that before working with Nate, so that's been a, a huge plus. Hopefully, give me a good advantage on stage. Hopefully, uh, stack up a little bit larger against some of those guys, a little bit bigger in size. So, yes, yeah, we're gonna be crossing over into classic physique, um, which I would not have foreseen, <laughs> but Nate talked me into it. Um, just kind of helped me realize that uh, I is pretty well suited for where I'm at right now. Maybe not for forever, but for where I'm at right now, um, just with my taller taller frame, longer limbs, um, it's gonna take a little while to fill out um, to really be, you know, that 230, 240 uh, actual bodybuilder type look. Um, so I have a little bit leaner, um, longer physique, so um, he thinks I would excel and do really well, and I think so too, so we're gonna give it a shot. Um, and I'm really excited. Uh, I think I'm going to do um, some, some pretty cool stuff and place really well. Uh, pretty confident going into it. I've never been this confident going into a show, so I feel really good about where I'm at. And just want to say thanks to Nate for guiding me along the way and, and encouraging me. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun. I think people are going to be able to see the difference in the videos. How far you've come in five weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just in five weeks. I mean, uh, I look. I would say I look a good 10 pounds bigger um, in my chest and shoulders. And I mean, my legs have, you know, all that cardio was really killing my legs, which was not good because my legs are my strong point. I mean, that's, you know, one of my good qualities. And uh, that cardio was just killing them. And, and now, you know, we, we've backed down off the cardio, still doing it every day, but um, not to the point where it, they're flattening out. I mean, they still keep their fullness, still training heavy as hell. Um, but I've just been feeding them and, uh, you know, replenishing all that glycogen, all that uh, sarcoplasm. And, um, so, yeah, they've kept their fullness, and that's definitely come back. Meanwhile, just been tightening up like crazy. Yeah, so I started coaching. I started competing in 2012, and then I started coaching other people about a year later. Um, we're Team Classic Fitness. I'm opening a gym called Classic Fitness. It's in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, 4014 West Saginaw. Uh, Facebook page is Latham's Classic Fitness. Uh, should be open in about two weeks. Uh, I really opened it because all the other gyms in the area were they're being run. I mean, they're like corporate gyms, so the people that run them don't care if stuff breaks. It's broken for months, and they just don't put anything back into it. And the gyms aren't set up for people that actually make progress. If anything, they're set up to hold you back. So uh, I just want a gym that's more suitable for 
helping people, and it's what I love to do, and I want to keep doing it. And this gives me an outlet. In fact, some of the other gyms in the area threatened to kick me out because they wanted me to pay them at least half of what I was making, which I was unwilling to do. So, uh, yeah, and anyway, so I've been coaching a lot of, I've been more upfront about my athletes this year. I used to hold back because I was worried about this, that, and the other thing, but I all, yeah, well, I hate saying that word, but yeah. Uh, so far this year, every one of my athletes has taken first overall in every category that they've competed in. Yeah, Jenny Schramm just won the overall for physique at the John Simmons. Uh, I had a couple of guys at the Kalamazoo bodybuilder, Josh Cass, won overall. Uh, the year before that, he actually took dead last. And then he came to me, and, and we came back the next year, and he went overall at the same exact show. It was like a redemption for him. Abel Loco did his first show ever there and won first overall in physique. I had a girl in Chicago do bikini and win overall in two categories. So... It's just been really good and everything's been going really well. I think I think the Grand Rapids people are gonna get kill. Obviously it depends on who shows up, you know, but I think the way he looks right now and if we make light heavies for sure, uh, we'll get the weigh-ins, eat some food, fill back out a little bit, <laughs> unstoppable. I know I'm a little biased maybe, but he looks good. I can't say he can tell you anything otherwise. I got a guy named Don doing men's physique. Again, I think he looks unstoppable. I also have a guy named Chris Jolly. He'll be doing classic also, so hopefully, our classic guys go one and two. Uh, we'll see what happens, but I see all good things happening for everybody. It's just there's so much pro science out there and so many old school theories, and people refuse to, to move out of the past. And I know that a lot of people are, get sick of like the science thing. Like Ben Pakowski is all about the science. I think he might be too much into the science, but like there is legitimate proof that shows, you know, if you how you eat, how the body reacts. And a lot of people like to say, well, just because it works for Devin and, and you doesn't mean it'll work for me. Like, no, it will. Like, it's science. Like, yes, unless you have diabetes or some sort of other issue, your body works differently. Exactly. A genetic anomaly or something. Okay, there's slight differences. And yes, like that, we are different. Devin's abs look different than my abs. Or our biceps peak differently. But internally, if I eat carbohydrates and he eats carbohydrates, our pancreases are going to produce insulin. If I eat protein, he eats protein, it's gonna break down to amino acids, et cetera, et cetera. Internally, we all work the same. Just like an engine in a car, we work the same. If you know how to run that engine, then you can run everybody's engine. It's not like, it's different. A mechanic can work on any engine, it's not just one. So I think people, like I said, the old school, a lot of people think that you just eat like no carbs, and that's, I, I hate keto diets. I hate them. I think. That, there's some very there is some science behind them, but the body doesn't want to run on ketones. It does not want to run on the ketones. It's like a backup generator for your for your mind, and it, it kills you. And if you see people that run keto diets, they're always dying. You know, they're, they're two weeks out and they can't think. You talk to them and they look like zombies. Whereas Devin's still sitting here like like it's like he's still ten weeks out, just talking to us normally. Oh, yeah, if you want to contact me, um, you just, you just Facebook me. Yeah, uh, Nathaniel Latham. I'm on Facebook. Or like I said, Latham's Classic Fitness, facebook.com slash Latham's Classic Fitness. I get emails there. Or uh, classicfitnesslancing at gmail.com. Just hit me up any way you want, and we, I can take care of you for sure. I'd like to thank my sponsor, Line 1 Nutrition. Um, they've just been really, really supportive uh, throughout this whole prep, just helping me, um, you know, just backing me, supporting every move that I make. Um, still allowing me to call my own shots and decide. Uh, like when I told them I wanted to, you know, cross over and do classic as well, they said, you know, if you're confident, uh, we'll support you. Um, and then just taking on Nate. Uh, I just want to thank Nate. He's just been amazing uh, with all his voodoo. And uh, just the whole team, team classic is a really cool thing coming together. A lot, we have a lot of talent, uh, a lot of hardworking people. Um, and when you put, like you said, like when you put hard work with, you know, science and a good diet that actually makes sense, um, not just, not just cause somebody said so, but because that's how your body works. When you put those things together and with determination and, and people who actually have a passion for this and, and, and want to succeed in this, um, it's just really cool to see how it's all coming together. So. Yeah, I just want to thank all of my clients um, that are out there busting ass every day and actually do listen to what I say and implement what I say. Uh, without them, I 
would not be anything special. Um, I mean, the highest I ever placed in the show was second place. I've never won a show, but my clients do great. So I want to thank them, and I guess I want to thank my dad a little bit because without him, I wouldn't have even I wouldn't care about bodybuilding. My dad was a bodybuilder in the '80s, and I won the Mr. Lansing in '86, and like I grew up in the gyms. And uh, other than that, I guess. Just thank God and uh, the chicken shawarma place next to my gym for feeding me all the time. 